Just trying to survive and learn to love along the way. By Foreplay on AO3. Episode 8. Chapter 8. Of the Future and More Tears. Shota follows Tsukuichi out of the room, feeling guilty leaving Izuku behind in that state. At least he's got Hisashi with him. All right, Eraserhead, I'll make this quick. His statement is more than enough to proceed with charges. Par with what we have both witnessed, this case is pretty open and shut. You may need to testify if this goes to court, but I'll do my best to keep Izuku out of it. Thank you. This is stressful enough for him already. There is the small matter of his father. We managed to contact him, but he told us he wanted nothing to do with the kid. He even signed the papers to relinquish custody. So, that won't be a problem. Jesus, what kind of father refuses a relationship with his kid? Not that Shota minds at all that much. It makes it so much more easier for them to take him home. You know how he mentioned his mother saying he works overseas? Well, he's the kind of father that runs a small village gang in America. Now, I'm assuming you want to take the kid home. Of course, Hisashi and I both have our foster license for cases like this. We already filed out the child abuse forms with the hospital. They should have faxed those to you already. We just need to fill out the fostering forms so we could take him home. I'm guessing you already knew the answer and brought them with you. Sukuichi gives him a smug look as he pulls the form out of his briefcase. Shoda starts filing them out as they talk so the detective can take them with him when he leaves. Alright, I'll see if I can put in a good word with the social worker once they're assigned. You can tell them not to bother looking at other placements for him. We're both wanting to keep Izuku more long-term. Tsukuichi gives him a look at that. You going soft on us, Eraserhead? Shoulda does dignify with an answer, instead showing the detective his middle finger as they turn back to the kids' room and begin the walk there. They run into Dr. Carla on the way, and he allows her to step into the room first. All right, Izuku. I'm just going to check you over, and then, if everything is to my liking, you can get out of here. The problem child nods from his place on the bed, scrubbing at his face to get rid of the tears. Hisashi steps back to stand next to him as Claudia gets to work. Everything go all right with Suguichi? He hands them the forms to sign before answering. Yeah, there shouldn't be any custody problems on account of one garbage father. Hisashi gives the forms to a lurking Tsukuichi before he turns his attention back to their kid. Well, that's a relief. Shota simply nods, eyes following the movement of the doctor. Izuku seems a little more confident this time around, watching the heroes instead of the doctor. All right, everything looks good to go. He will be sore. He will be sore for a few days while his bruises heal. The wrist might become a long-term issue with residue pain, so make sure you keep an eye on that. I'll prescribe some few painkillers and send the forms with a nurse while they bring the discharge paperwork for you. With that, Adia is gone, leaving the pros alone with their new charge. S Sensei, where would I go now? Izuka looks more than a little nervous, fresh tears sprouting in his eyes. Show! You didn't tell him? Hisashi looks outraged, and Shota rolls his eyes at his antics. You're coming home with us, problem child. I hope you like cats. Shota gave him a wide smile, one that usually unnerves his class. Izuku simply answered with a grin of his own. What he hopes are happy tears falling from his eyes. They don't have to wait long for the paperwork, and Shota sends Hisashi to fill the prescription while he deals with it. He fills it out quickly. Then he and Izuku slowly make their way to the front desk, Hisashi joining them while the nurse checks over the forms. Everything seems to be in order. I hope I don't have to see you here again, mister. She directs the last part at Izuku as she hands him a sucker. The kid looks mortified, and Shota has to repress a laugh. It seems he didn't succeed, though, because Izuku shoots him a glare as they walk out the doors into the car that is parked much closer than before. They make their drive in silence, the only noise coming from the soft playing radio. By the time they make it home, it's nearly six o'clock, so Isashi sets about making a light dinner while Shota shows Izuku around the apartment. He starts to tour from the entrance that leads directly to the living room. The wall to their left is lined with various records and CDs, 
while the one across from it has multiple bookshelves and some small knick-knacks, mostly belonging to Izashi. The third wall house, their TV and sound system with a few pictures scattered on the walls. There's a couch in the center of it all, and Shota suspects that at least one cat is curled up on it. Instead of a fourth wall, the living room opens up to a dining room and the kitchen, where Sashi is already humming, a tune as he cooks. There's a hallway at the edge of the wall, with bookshelves that lead to the bedroom and bathroom. Shota in Asashi's room is the first one on the right, while an office across the hallway on the left. Right next to the office is the bathroom, and across from that, and next to his own room, is the spare room. Now Izuku's. Shota shows him the room with a small smile, and notes the surprise on Izuku's face as he takes it in all. I may have broken into your old place and knacked some of your stuff while I was supposed to be napping. Thought you'd feel a little more comfortable that way. He notices how the kid's eyes light up at the notebook stacked on his desk, and he's not surprised when Izuku turns around and hugs him. He just simply hugs him back. Th thank you so much. You guys have been so nice to me, and I don't know what I would have done if y you hadn't answered the phone. I can't thank you enough for this. Izuku, you being here and okay is more than enough thanks. Still, thank you. Shota gives him one last squeeze before letting go and leading him back towards the dining room, where Hisashi is just setting the table for dinner. They eat in silence for a few minutes before Shota speaks up. All right, kiddo. I figure we have two options for tomorrow. You could either come to school with us or hang here with the cats. Either way, Hisashi and I probably should teach our classes tomorrow. I think. I'd like to go to classes. Shoulda gives him a soft smile before resuming dinner. Once they're all done and cleaned up, they sit Izuku on the couch to introduce him to the cats. This one is Toothless. Sho named him that because he has no teeth and that is his favorite movie. Hisashi is holding out their fluffy black cat for a giggling Izuku to pet, while Shoda shoots his husband a glare. What movie is that? Oh. My. God. Shoda has to silence his husband with his quirk. S sorry I w was n never really allowed to watch m movies. I only d did when sh she forgot about me and left for a few days. Izuka looks so disappointed in himself. He feels so badly for something that wasn't his fault. That's okay, little listener. It's not your fault. But it will be ours if we don't rectify that soon. Shoda has to speak up now, before it becomes too obvious that he's feeling things. Hisashi will never let him hear the end of it. This one is radio, because she is loud and Hisashi is stupid. Izuku is laughing now, reaching out for the small Siamese that meows loudly in response at being passed around. She settles in his lap, though and starts purring as the problem child sets about petting her. It's not long before they're all yawning, the day's events catching up with them. Izuku goes to bed without complaint, and they follow suit. Shoda is asleep in no time. Hisashi's warmth at his side. This was a cute chapter. Obviously, we've had a lot of hard-hitting chapters, and this one's a cute one. I like to see, or not like to see, but I liked, I like to see, Mm -mm. How do I word this? I liked that the author put, there you go, uh, that little tidbit about uh, Izuku's dad, you know, being in America, running a mafia, uh, not a mafia gang, like a small village gang, like that's, that's interesting. Uh, nice information. I also really love that he just signed off all his custody and stuff like that, so they're completely free to adopt Izuku. We love that. We need that. That is amazing. That is wonderful. I, I love it. I love it. Um, Obviously, we have some cute bonding moments. I also love that because they go to uh, school together and stuff like that, they all seem to already have a trusting dynamic. This is always what I love about um, Eraser Mike adopting already like teeny Zuku, like already uh, UA Zuku. Uh, for the most part, 
we skip over the whole learning to trust thing and we go straight into bonding. Um, this doesn't happen very often, uh, especially, or well, no, not someone better. We didn't go through that because they were family, but like for the most part, there's like that little area where like they're learning to trust each other kind of thing. Uh, I'm not saying I hate that, but sometimes I really do love to just get into the meat of things. Um, I'm gonna make a prediction. We are 30 episodes, wait, no, hold up. What are the tags? I don't know. Courtroom drama. I just, one of the tags is courtroom drama. I'm concerned. Okay. Uh, chronic pain. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, child neglect. That's obvious. Um, minor character death. Dabi is Todoroki Toya. That is hilarious considering that it's completely canon now. Uh, selectively meet uh, Izuka Midoriya, which uh, we already see signs of the extensive mu um, not muttering but stuttering uh happens in specific areas in specific instances where izuku is feeling really overwhelmed or really really um um nervous or angsty or sad or for example what he did in this chapter where he felt guilty and like shit i did something wrong like those moments where he starts to little himself kind of thing and there was even a moment where he just completely went silent because it was too loud and he couldn't sleep um which, uh, yeah, selective mutism, uh, bad parenting. Okay, I don't see any of the tags that would hint to me what uh, the plot of this is. So I feel like we're gonna get um, we're gonna get an accidental follow father or or not father dad or uh, pa calling right like Izuku's gonna call them like dad uh, around chapter hmm thirty around chapter thirty and up. Chapter 30 and up, I'm, I'm, watch it be the next chapter, I swear to fucking god. Um, <laughs> these are very small uh, chapters. I noticed that someone mentioned the fact that yes, this has 127 chapters. And it is 180,000 words long. It is about three books worth of stuff, right? Something like this, this big, is right up my alley. I love this. Uh, it's actually part of a series, too, where it has seven works. So it has the main one that I'm reading, and then it has um, one, two, three, four, five, five one-shots. And then this one, just trying to become a family. Uh, I'm not going to read that because that's probably going to spoil me. This is what happened last time. I got spoiled because I read that. I got spoiled in before my heart gives out and I read that in like the description of the next one and I was like oh I got spoiled the fuck out of me um so I'm not reading that but yeah so it it, it is lengthy and then it has other ones I think I'm only gonna do this and maybe the other series I don't I, I don't know it just depends it also depends on what the author allows me to do uh if you're the author and you're you're here I am loving the series so far I love your writing style it's it's a very not a very what's it okay so you're not heavily description based but you're not heavily action based you have a nice mixture of the two you add some um uh what's it called you do add description don't get me wrong you do add description uh, i'm not saying that this is like a horrible thing this is just your writing style um and i really do appreciate your writing style it's good it's easy to follow it's nice to read it's good i know that um you know someone might say oh but it's not like you know those classy books like moby dick and uh what's that one where it's the boys in the fucking island and they're i don't know e england boys uh in the island and they start killing each other or something what was it called what's it called a ring of something no uh lord of the flies i think i don't know right where those oh my fucking god lord of the Flies specifically is so hard to read because the writing style look there is that type of writing style is what i like to call classical writing style in the sense of you don't know what the fuck is going on because sometimes you need a translator, all right? Those books absolutely annoy the fuck out of me. If I see that that has the writing style, I'm not saying that it's a horrible writing style, it's just not a writing style that I enjoy, but like, 
for the most part, there's also the mixed writing style, but for the most part, you have a very simplistic, that's the word, simplistic writing style that really suits the story. You allow for the plot to shine, and, and it, I, I love it. Um, I love the way you describe certain characters and how you're portraying certain things and, and stuff like that. I am loving your story so far and your writing style. I am falling in love with it. I really much like it. I might look at some of your other works. There's certain authors that I put on a list of, I'm gonna probably either uh, ask to podfix some other of the works or just sit and read some other of the works because sometimes it'd be like that. Sometimes it'd be like that, you know? But as always, my rain drops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content. And thank you so much for watching.